Firstly, your reaction to the Prime Minister missing the end of the D-Day anniversary. It's appalling, and it shows the man doesn't understand. You know, he's not basically patriotic. He doesn't care about our history, frankly, our culture. You know, D-Day was an amazing operation between the Americans, Canadians and us. It was the beginning of the liberation of Europe. It was done at huge sacrifice. There are still people alive that were there, and they were back on those beaches. It's the last time they'll ever be there. But that didn't matter to the Prime Minister. No, getting back to do an interview seemed to take a higher priority. And it shows just how disconnected this Prime Minister is. And that's a big problem, because the one thing you've always associated the Conservatives with is being a patriotic party. Well, it's now got an unpatriotic leader. Is it as much about the people around the Prime Minister advising him as it is about him himself? Oh, I'm sure that he was given bad advice, but he is supposed to be a national leader in tune with where the nation is. And, and, and I promise you something. You know, D-Day is something the people of this nation are immensely proud of, and rightly so. This was an occasion on a national and international scale to pay homage, particularly to those few survivors that we have left. He doesn't understand that. I was there, but I was there in a personal capacity with friends. I raised money for a charity, a lot of money to get veterans out there. And, and honestly, I think I'm much more closely attuned to where the country than he is. You were there, but in this campaign you've said that m some young Muslims don't share British values. Would you like to pay tribute to the one million Muslims who served in the British Army during the Second World War? It's far bigger than that. Actually, 40% of the entire contribution that we made, that we had in two world wars, 40% came from what we now call the Commonwealth. So there were people right across the world, and by the way, they were all volunteers. None of them were pressed to do it. So I fully understand that history. The problem that, that, that I'm talking about is a separate problem of 18 to 24 year old young Muslims who were born in this country who, have, who increasingly are being radicalised. Do you understand why people have found those comments uncomfortable to say the least? Why it has been you know, taken on by people, you say you're not racist, but it has been used by people who are racist to fuel their arguments? I'm not interested in those people and thank goodness in this country they are a tiny minority fringe. All I'm doing is stating an obvious truth that makes people in Britain feel very, very uncomfortable. Why? And I don't know the answer. Why are young British-born Muslims being attracted to jihad and radicalism? And, and if we don't talk about it, we've no chance of dealing with it. I'm going to ask you one more question quickly on D-Day. President Biden and Macron both use this as an opportunity to stress the importance of more support for Ukraine. Um, you once spoke of your admiration for Vladimir Putin. No, I didn't. You, you said he was an operator, as that, you put it. Well, that's not admiration, is it? So let's get this right. I said he was. Do you still think? He, I that? said he was an unpleasant human being. I wouldn't want to spend time with him, but he was a very clever political operator. Let's, so so let, let, let's let, let's get the context right, shall we? And can I ask, do you think that you're more charismatic than Richard Tice? Oh goodness gracious me! That's not for me to judge. Do you go on? I don't know. I've no idea, but I am more charismatic than Starmer and Sunak. Of that, I have no doubt did, at all. How do you take the news that you were bigfooting him this week? <laughs> Look, he he'd been urging me to do this for the last few months. I was the one that was reluctant.